I received almost 600 invites in the past 30 days. But what does it mean? It means that I've seen this thousands and thousands of times. I've made dozens of mistakes in the last few years and had to figure out a quick way to determine whether a client is good or not and whether I should even send in a proposal or if it would probably just be sending my connects down the drain. And because not only am I regularly applying for jobs but also receiving a high volume of invites, I've had to come up with my own speed method to quickly filter clients. While it's a pretty deep process, here are the top three speed method tactics that are gonna help you identify the best clients and avoid the not so great ones. First, check out the client's review score that they're getting from freelancers. This is the rating that you're going to see on the client's job description where freelancers have rated that client what they think about them after working together. If that client's reviews are either below four and a half stars or they have no reviews at all, then I avoid them. Here's why. I found that past human behavior is generally a pretty good guide of future human behavior. What somebody's done before, they're probably gonna do again. So if this person has been a very great client in the past and they've been easy and fun to work with and they're choosing the right freelancers to work with, then there's no reason why they shouldn't have at least four and a half stars. However, it goes a little bit deeper than that. You also need to check out the client's past reviews that they've given to freelancers. This part is super important because if the client has given superstar, five-star reviews to every freelancer that they've worked with, then that's fantastic because odds are, if you're a good fit and you do a great job, then you're gonna get five stars too. But if that client has a history of giving below five-star reviews to freelancers, then back away slowly and then run. You also need to look at the average rate that the client is paying for other freelancers that they're working with because you're trying to answer this question for yourself. Is this client used to regularly paying my rate to other freelancers that they work with? If so, great. But if the client's average rate paid is $3.21 an hour and you're at $13 or $33 or $53, then your chances of winning that job kind of drastically decrease. However, there is an exception. If the client has a total amount of spend that far exceeds the total value of the project that you're gonna be working on, then it's actually okay. For example, even if your rate is $30 an hour and your total project budget would be 500, and the client's average rate paid is that same $3.21 an hour, but they have over $50,000 spent then you're probably okay. You can find more clues on the client's project history, particularly regarding hourly rates of other freelancers they've hired. Next, you gotta look at the client age. Basically, you're trying to answer the question, when did this client sign up for Upwork? If they signed up today, then they probably don't know exactly how Upwork works, and you might end up answering questions like, how do I fund a milestone? Or, Upwork didn't accept my card, can you help me? Or, I don't know how to allow manual time or increase a weekly limit, please help. All of this means that you might end up being half of a freelancer and half Upwork customer support. And billing your standard hourly rate for answering Upwork technical support questions is generally not something that most clients are too happy to pay for. Be careful out there. See you in the next one.